Welcome to Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends spin a wheel once a week, it chooses the horror movie, and they discuss it. Today, we're talking about the 2017 film It Chapter One, which was directed by Andy Muschietti. I'm your co-host, Alec. I'm Eric, and with us is Kat Alina. Kat, thank you so much for being a part of the show. We're, we're happy to have you. Hi, thank you for having me. Welcome, Kat. Kat and I worked together at Avalon. This was so nice to have somebody that I'm, you know, working with constantly. And it was funny because, like, when we first started working, I did not know how big of a horror fan you were. And then, like, the more we started working, it slowly started coming out. And I was just like, whoa, you love horror movies. Yes, it's always just been, like, a huge love for me. I don't know. I was that weird little kid that, like, would watch Nightmare on Elm Street, Michael Myers, like, on repeat. And I'm like, yeah. And everyone else is like, oh, she's weird. (laughs) Do you have, like, a favorite horror movie of all time? What's your favorite scary movie? That's how you're supposed to ask Alex. (laughs) Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm an idiot. (laughs) Honestly, it was The Others for the longest time with Nicole Kidman. It's just such a classic, and I just loved it. I would watch that movie on VHS on repeat when I was, like, seven. That's one you don't hear a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. But right now, I think it's The Conjuring. It's just such a good movie. We just did both the Conjuring movies, and the third one's coming out in like what, like a month, right, or two months? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Annabelle, that. Annabelle's one. in my backyard. <laughs> oh no! It's right down the street. <laughs> Were you nervous when she escaped? Were you like, oh shit? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> well, like legit though. Like the the Warren's Museum is like 15 minutes from where Eric lives. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I don't really like go outside or anything oh, no. I stay here you just pass by and it's like oh god i feel weird nope. yeah, yeah. you're like we're gonna take the long way to the grocery store it's like why it's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah no the country movies are really fun and uh yeah the others that is that's yeah nicole I saw that in theaters dude like eons ago oh yeah <laughs> eric and i are old cat sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I I mean, i'm not that young but... no no i know i know <laughs> but yeah the others that had that best twist i always thought it was an m night Shyamalan movie just because of that twist yeah which... i did not expect it and that was always my favorite part showing someone that movie that hadn't seen it i'm just like hold on hold on you don't even know you don't even know wait yeah i know and then going it has such good like uh, rewatch value because you can just look at it and be like ah, 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 oh no everything's starting to make sense like yeah that's a good one don't want to ruin that one too much but now are you a big stephen king fan in general or no, yeah, I'm a very big Stephen King fan. I read um, Pet Cemetery. I've never gotten around to reading it because it's just so huge. It's gigantic. But... I've seen it in the library. Yeah. I'm like, nah, nah. Like, <laughs> no. Is that part one or part? It's both of them. Oh no! Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, what's his name? The other one with um, Curry. That one's yeah. pretty good, but this one mm-hmm. was just the casting was great. It was just amazing. I this is actually one of my favorite horror movies too. It's like up there. Yeah, and this may be, I think, like the most successful horror film of all time. I mean, it made seven hundred and one million dollars. Mm-hmm. So I, I think in two thousand and seventeen, yeah. it definitely was, especially broke opening weekend records as well. Yeah, it's yeah. Long. I mean, I didn't know how successful it was, but that's crazy. I mean, for a horror film too, especially. I feel like on Rotten Tomatoes and just like the ratings are usually really low because I don't know why horror never does well but when it has like a seven I think this one has like an eight or nine you're just like oh this is a good good film (laughs) oh yeah it's got an 86 on Rotten Tomatoes and you're just like uh Jesus yeah no and it doesn't mess around I mean it's long it is a very long movie but like I don't know it's you expect it to be long the book is 1100 pages so if the movie's not long you'd be like okay they're cutting out Mm -hmm. so much so, did, Eric, did, did we see this in theaters? I can't remember. No, I actually saw this with my wife, Shannon, and uh, it was the last horror movie we saw together. I was starting to, like, get her into <laughs> horror movies, and, like, we watched, like, I think, like, Blair Witch and one of the paranormal activities and a couple other things. And then this I saw in theaters, and she was so mad at me because she was freaking <laughs> out. And she she was freaking out. And, um, yeah, we went opening night. I think it was, like, a 10 p.m. showing. Besides Star Wars, it's the last film I've been to where there was a line all the way out the door. Everyone mm. wanted to see this movie. I still have the ticket stub. I oh, I really wanted to see this movie. I was a big fan of the TV miniseries. I had the, <laughs> the tape, uh, VHS tape, and then I got the DVD. 
I used to watch that a lot. I, I, I watched it when it was on TV with uh, John Ritter and, and obviously Tim Curry. And um, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's class. And that was based in 1958. It was based in the 50s, the TV miniseries. This yeah, one's like this one's in the 80s, late 80s, yeah. like New Kids on the Block, like stuff like that, which I think is so cool. And like I, I think like, huh, maybe in 2040 they'll do a version in 2017 or something. Who knows? So keep it the tradition yeah. of like the blob it's kind well of it's every 27 years which is how long it hibernates that that number 27 has become a huge part of this movie that would be really you... cool yeah i would like that like every 27 years a new adaptation with new actors and it's like oh <laughs> yeah why not i mean it's it's a very timeless story kind of thing um you know i was kind of thinking about it i was like this is kind of like a bear version of of monsters inc like they have to hibernate but then they come out and they you know he strategically knows what scares them the most and feeds yeah. off the fear i don't know i'm crazy but <laughs> um <laughs> when did you see the movie cat for the first time do you see it in theaters i yeah i didn't see it opening week just because it was literally sold out mm-hmm. everywhere mm-hmm. so i think i went maybe like the second or third week it was out but i was like ready i wanted to see it i was super excited i had been looking forward to it uh, especially with all the promos and everything they did for them. I was like, oh my God, this looks amazing. And even all the promos they did after for it, chapter two, I yeah. was just like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> you, you were living out here in LA then, right? Mm-hmm. Did they do anything cool for it? I know it, pre- I think it premiered at that, that Chinese theater. So, Oh my God, yes. So on Hollywood, I don't know what street it was actually, but it was in Hollywood. They had this corner area that was like a pop-up fun house and they did that for it chapter one and i was like holy shit and i didn't even know what was happening i just drove by and i was like this is a thing and there was Uh. like a line around the corner and then i was like you know what we're not doing anything let's go so i went with like a bunch of my friends and it was literally terrifying but that's one of the biggest promos that they did here in la whereas they just had a random fun house pop up that was pretty much like a maze that you would see at like halloween horror nights or something with it and like pennywise and i just thought it was insanely clever and super cool damn yeah that's what i love about like places like new york and la is they just go crazy especially in la with like movie premieres and stuff mm-hmm. uh horror ones too like it's just such a fun attraction because it's like you can do like the scary house stuff so like there's people that want to get afraid i'm sure because this came out in september so people are just like oh sweet halloween's like let's get mm-hmm. it kick-started yeah yeah that's cool I read Philly was littered with red balloons on sewer grates and all the police and the law enforcement was like, I'm not going to remove the balloons and stuff. Like, no. <laughs> they just brought back the killer clowns and stuff. Do you guys remember that? The ones that were, the ones that were just on the freeway at the side of the road. That was like a thing for like a little bit. And we were like, what's going on? Yeah. Do you, okay. We, all right, so Eric and I, we talked about Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We kind of talked about this, but like, do you remember when this movie came out? There was so much stuff on the news. It's just like people are dressing up like clowns and with knives and, <laughs> and there's yeah. all those videos. Remember that? Yeah. And like the, the scaring people and like, and everyone's like warning. I saw them on news around here and I'm like, that's not happening here. But, um. <laughs> yeah. Cause they would just post up at this, like at the highway, like on the side, we're just like with the balloon, just like being all eerie. And people were like, ew, what is going on? <laughs> what the hell? And we talked about that. it. Cause there was like almost like a news report that came out where it was like actual clowns who were working at the circus and stuff. They were like, we are losing our clown jobs. <laughs> yeah. Like, we talked about it. Yeah. It's that. like, you are taking away our clown jobs. This film, and Stephen King have removed a clown jobs. Yeah, they're like boycotting. Yeah, they were. They were. Like, now you could be like, you're asking me to wear a mask. I'm wearing a mask. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know though. I'm. I've never really been afraid of clowns. I know that's kind of like a common thing, but like, I mean, obviously it is yeah. scary. But like, just the clowns in general, like Bozo the Clown and stuff. You see like that. Like, I'm not afraid of that. I don't know. Are you guys? Are you guys clown? Yeah. I don't even know what it's called. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. York? I'm very afraid. I'll tell you this. I watch every every horror documentary in the world from the what what the hell's the guy in LA, Night Stalker, all all those like Netflix ones. I refuse clown stuff. I hate clowns. Hate them. Wow. There's a picture of me with clowns. I'll send it to you, Alec. There's a the old picture of me in like preschool. And I look <laughs> I look like I'm terrified. What about you, Kat? I think I'm with Alec on this one. Yeah, like I'm I'm not afraid of clowns. I feel like when I was little, I had like maybe like when I was one, I had like clowns at my birthday party and I never really like were scared of them because I don't know. I just internally thought like I could just beat them up. That's that's fine. Like I'll just grab a bat, start hitting them or something. But like for me, it's more like the demons and like the Warren's house. Like I don't know. Yeah, stuff you can't see, you know, and stuff that like 
Yeah, the things that go bump at night. Yeah, the, I'm, uh, I don't know, clowns. Yeah. I think my childhood really messed me up with clowns because when I was a kid, there was Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Not that I was a kid when that was made. I, I saw that at a very young age, like four or five. Are You Afraid of the Dark? They had like the Zebo the clown and then the ghastly grinner jester more than a clown but i used to be so f afraid of like makeup and costumes and not my thing really still not still isn't i'm not not afraid of them today as a 31 year old man but <laughs> <laughs> i gotta say though i i know this is maybe controversial but i actually think that the tim curry the actual clown is a little scarier i actually just like looking at them together mm -hmm. i think bill skarsgård did an amazing job on nothing about his performance but oh, yeah. if i just saw two pictures back like just face to face like with their crazy teeth i don't know why for some reason that tim curry one's always freaked me out a little bit more yeah i think it's that like Bill's Pennywise was more comedic and Tim Curry's was just like literally frightening. Like I would be scared, but then I would still get my bat and beat him up. <laughs> but like Bill's, I would just get my bat and beat him up. No remorse. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> not knocking scars. I thought, yeah, like you said, Al, he did an amazing job. He seems like he really loved this role mm. from interviews. I saw him like on Jimmy Kimmel and like Conan and he's just, he's all about it. He really ate this role up and he's kind of been, cast it as the new like horror guy which is kind of cool too but i mean curry really paved that road of pennywise obviously and, but curry was more raw like the, the scene of him digging in the grave if you remember that like vividly it feels like like a fever dream if you remember that scene the loser club's grave there's like a scene of that and then him yes. on the railing in the library it just seems like more realistic where this is a lot more animation involved and visual effects and makeup. I mean, there's like the, the teeth in general are way more than the Tim Curry one. Yeah, that that was one thing, like very raw. And part of me is like, I wish I could live in a world. I know Tim Curry had a stroke back in the early 2000s. He's, he's in a wheelchair now. He's in acting still. He does like a few small, small gigs and he does a lot of comic cons and stuff like that. I would love to be in a world where he could reprise the role of Pennywise. I would love that. But uh, I think Bill Skarsgård is a very close second. Very close, for sure. Yeah, he was fantastic. I, I still, I, I think I like this rendition better. I still enjoy the newer one compared to the uh, the TV one. I think, you know, just the fact that it's rated R, you can do more, you know. Um, and the book's very graphic, so I think having that film adaptation version just gives it more freedom, I guess. Yeah, right off the bat, when Georgie's arm gets, like, ripped off in the sewer, it's like, we're in it, we're in it. Yeah, no, they did a great job. But yeah, Kat, what do you think of the music in this? What's your What's your thoughts on that? I love it. I think it's just so suspenseful, so 80s. Yeah, I really like how it tells a story and it just, but I also, there were certain parts where it was like kind of like modern, like when he's like doing the dancing scene and he's like the dancing clown. I was just like, oh, okay, we're doing electronic now. I see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, that seems really strange where he's like, Pennywise, a dancing clown. And he's doing that thing. It's like, well, who's that for? Like who's <laughs> oh, there, there's so many memes from that when that came out. I remember like so many people on the internet were like showing yeah. like videos of like him dancing to like what is love? <laughs> Baby, don't oh, hurt no. me. And like random shit like that. I love that. And I feel like that was different. Like he's not really known to be the dancing clown, or I could be wrong, but from what I know, Stephen King didn't make him as Pennywise the dancing clown. Yeah, they definitely latch on to that like circus that came to town sort of thing. And and I wonder, like, so what is it? I've heard he's an alien. I've also heard he's like an interdimensional, like monster. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I'll say this real. That that happens in the second movie. So if we want to spoil that for any listener, shut it off now. But real quick, he's a shape shifting alien. Interdimensional or not, he's an alien. Oh. Okay. I thought he was a demon. Yeah. He's an alien. He's an alien. So I think. Did you notice? when um the mouth opens and he's going to like bite beverly and he's got those three dots in his mouth yeah apparently that's like i don't i've heard and i don't know that's like something to do with his alien spaceship or something like that like that's oh. his I, I don't even know what i'm saying but it's supposed to be like his like <laughs> portal or something like that but yeah eric i also heard that he was an alien that basically yeah feeds mm -hmm. on fear and then hibernates for 27 years yes yeah it's interesting i mean you think that someone who lived in dairy would just branch out to like brooklyn or something but um he just stays in Derry, maine because it's it's where he likes to, to sleep maybe it's the weather maybe you know the arthritis doesn't bother him mm -hmm. I, I don't know why he stays in Derry, but he landed in that that well or whatever that area mm. yeah 
Well, he can live, uh, you know, because if, if you lived in a place like New York or L.A. or whatever, you would attract too much attention. So in Derry, it's like he can kind of slip under the radar less. In the sewer system. The whole thing was the sewer system. That was what was cool. Yeah, because he's not that strong, if you really think about it. Like, all of these young kids are stabbing him in the head with fire pokers and stuff. Like, could you imagine if, like, adults figured this shit out? And they're like, um, let's just get guns yeah. and blow his fucking head off. Like, That was the thing that never, like, I was like, why don't they just get a freaking gun? And just like, you're done. Yeah. Well, even with the um the uh, sheep shooting gun or whatever, they shoot him in the head with that. That doesn't. Yeah, the C- the CO the CO two gun. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't seem to do too much. That's the thing. I'm like kind of confused. Like, so what kills him? Is it just yeah. they learn to be like, yeah, you're not that scary anymore. I mean, it, it's starving spoils the second one, I but think. it's like words. <laughs> Get yeah. starving and malnourishment, and then also getting beat. He he it hates these kids. Like he hates these kids, but he wants to eat them so badly because he's like, oh, this is like filet to him. Because if I get these kids scared, then it's going to be the best food I ever had, I think. Yeah, I mean, it is all – it's it's such a cool idea because, like, he does – he plays on each of their individual fears. And I I love that. I love how he's shape-shifting, and we it's not just the clown. We get to see all these different ones. Do you guys have one that scared you the most of all of his little shape-shifting? Oh, yes. The woman that he shape-shifts into to scare Stanley. Freaking terrifying. I'm like, what is that? First of all, who painted that? Like – disturbed much <laughs> yeah i like how he just like walks by the painting and like not making eye contact i would do the same thing today like, <laughs> like, no no this painting's either i go or this painting goes because this is not staying it's terrifying right? it's like the painting from um the conjuring too like that's like that one that he draws like the nun or whatever you don't hang that up no one hangs that up <laughs> no but I, I i don't really can't think of mine but i know yours alec because you're more of a not you're not a germaphobe but you would definitely be scared of the homeless guy <laughs> outside the house is that right i actually was gonna go with the one cat said i, oh. I think the woman is way scarier uh it's like mona lisa but like the demon version i could see why you'd say that though, like the leper guy yeah he's like will this help me eddie and he's like holding up like a red <laughs> pill <Yeah. laughs> But the, uh, the 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 fat kid. I don't want to say that, but the, the fat kid. What's what's his thing that chases him again? It was like the old lady falling apart or something, or what was it? It was the headless guy in the library. Yeah. Okay, so one thing I noticed in this time when I was watching, you know, when he's in the library flipping through the book and he's looking at all the the pictures or whatever the kid's head in the tree. If you guys notice in the background, the librarian is just like it, she's out of focus, but she's just deadpan staring at him. And I was like, whoa, that looks like Pennywise, like, kind of possessed her or something like that. Because you see the balloon floating in the background. But if you see, it cuts back to her. And it's just, like, this opposing force that's, like, behind him. And I never noticed it before. I was like, oh, shit. It's kind of scary. Hmm. One thing I never noticed about this movie, but I think this is the main point of this movie, is that (laughs) fear isn't real. It's fake. So is Eddie's asthma. Oh, my God. He was faking. He said, this is a gazebo. And that's kind of like, oh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. dude it's it's, it's a I whole think, allegory to asthma no i'm kidding <laughs> i think he did have asthma i think it was just like the pills were placebo oh, he did. He did. <laughs> i was like wait <laughs> they were good ga- these are gazebos i love that line oh i love favorites. richie and eddie so much they're uh yeah so great the line when i think it's eddie is the one who's it's his mom right that's eddie yeah that's eddie dude, yeah. the line where he's talking about aids i feel like i've had that conversation as a kid like some kid that's just like making up whatever things he heard he's like my friend's mom got it from this and like a place and you're just like all right dude like i feel like that kid exists crazy you bring that up too because aids was yeah. huge in the 80s like late 80s and mid 80s but but in the, the original the, the 50s version they did the blood pact at the end of the movie Eddie still does that at the end of the movie, like knowing all his fears and like AIDS is actually, and that's probably the most scared thing he can think about is AIDS. And he still does the blood pact at the end or the oath. Remember? Yeah. Also that glass. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? Nah, you got to find, you got to like, find a, <laughs> like a thumbtack or something simpler. Like, <laughs> yeah. Come on. And and like it looks like each of them get progressively worse. It looks like Beverly, they went like vertically up her yeah. wrist. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, oh, I would never, <laughs> ever, ever do that. Like, love you, Eric, but no. <laughs> I think we did do that in third grade. You got so mad at me. You got so mad at me. You, I was bleeding and I touched you. Do you remember that on the way to oh, recess? Yeah, you, you were so, I told you I was a werewolf or something. And you got, this is like third grade. You were so mad at me. I went to the office because of it too, but I do remember that. you know, not not right. calling you a narc or anything, but I remember very vividly these things. It was the nineties. What do you want? Yeah, the nineties. Yeah, it's right. before the internet. We didn't know what we were doing. 
I think I also definitely try to do that with some of like my best friends from middle school, but it wasn't because of like this movie because obviously it hadn't come out, but it was because of practical magic because in that movie they like also cut themselves. Again, another Nicole Kidman movie um, with Sandra Bullock. But yeah, they like their sisters. I was just going to say, I think I did it because of some Jonathan Taylor Thomas movie. I don't remember which one it was, but there was like a moose involved. <laughs> but anyway, continue. Yeah, pretty much just we did it. We tried to do it because of that movie, but it was like a really dull knife and it didn't happen. And we're just like, ah, whatever. We're we're best friends. This is fine. Oh, my God. It worked for me. It worked for me and Alec. We're still here. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Um, oh, my God. Do you ever see The Craft Cat? Oh, yes. I love that movie, too. Yeah, I'm just thinking of like other like late 90s witch movies now. I'm trying to think another thing about you know, like another Stephen King adaptation he's had, I mean, seriously, like 70 adaptations. Mm. One thing I've always wanted to know, because it's notorious how much he hates The Shining, and apparently he liked this one. I want there to be like a Stephen King court where basically whenever an adaptation comes out, he just walks out. He's got like a white wig on and his hand is just rocking back and forth. And he's like, yes, and like approves it or whatever. Like, <laughs> No, even better, even better. Like when the Pope dies and like there's like white smoke, he like, yes. like blows up a balloon out of chimney. Like, oh, <laughs> Stephen King approves. Yes. Like, yes, that's much better. That's much better. But yeah, that I think that'd be hilarious if it's just like the mist comes out and he's like, I like it. And the outsiders comes out and he's like, I disapprove. Sort of <laughs> Try again. The standby music, nay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's such controversy. Uh, but this is a great movie though if you're if you're a stephen king fan if you're a horror fan i mean i don't think there's you're you're you definitely gonna enjoy this it's yeah it's definitely one of my favorites because i feel like there's such a perfect balance it's like just enough horror just enough comedic relief the plot is great it's one of those movies that you can watch over and over again because there's some horror movies where you're like um oh, i'm good after the first watch but this one i feel like you could just watch it over and over again because it's it's funny it's great plot mm -hmm. It's funny you mentioned the comedic tone. I think you're absolutely right. This one does have like that nice balance where the second one goes off the yeah. rails with comedy. We got, oh, got the Bill Lord. Hater, dude. You got Bill Hater. I like, love him I, so much. What can you do? Like, it's like you're not going to like just bust into that well. I know. And Bill Hader is the funniest guy in the world, but still it's distracting. And I thought I was just like, damn it, because this movie's so good. You're like, OK, it's funny, but it's more scary than funny. So it definitely isn't a comedy second one felt like a comedy to me here's the truth yeah. of it. part part one is just no one no one cares about the older people going like who wants to see a goonies too with everyone now yeah no one. i don't <laughs> no you want to see the kids be kids and that's the fun part of it the idea that someday he could come back is so cool and when he does it is cool but it's like eh. it doesn't get you as psyched as the end of the first one it's it's like you know empire strikes back it ends so like oh, i want more this movie ends perfectly yeah. with that. Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah. I was, I could not wait. We saw this together. And I, uh, do you remember what I did at the theater, Alec? We saw part we two. We saw part together, two. Yeah. And I, I tied yeah. a balloon at a sewer grate there. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Right outside the theater. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, right. the second one is great, but I agree. It's just like the first one was amazing. We could have ended it. The second one was nice. And it was like, oh, okay, we got to see them grown up. And it was, it was nice. But yeah, no, I think the first one, maybe this is controversial, but I think the first one's better than the second one. Cause yeah, it was just, it missed something. There was like something that was missed. Some like mm -hmm. it was great, but like it was just not like the first one. I think just the kids, their chemistry and everything mm -hmm. was great. And I feel like for the second one, it was just like too much explaining, like having to go into all their backstories of what they did and just like all the force comedy that was there a little bit that I don't know, just missed the mark somewhere. It was still great. It was still amazing, but it was just the first one was just like chef's kiss, honestly. Yeah. And if you remember the uh, the TV series one, I think he turns into a spider at the end and it's just crazy. So I'd never read the book, but I know this is a, the bully. And the mm -hmm. first one, we see the lot of the bully. If you remember, I forget what's his name. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. But the guy who kills his father at the end of either. this movie with the knife, uh, yeah. he's yeah. barely in the part two, which in the book, he's in it a lot. Mm -hmm. Like he becomes its right hand man. That and then the bike is more of a thing with Bill. And I think is he's married in the in the book and he like wakes up his catatonic wife with the bike somehow. That's how the book ends. Oh, yeah. And they're riding down the hill. Oh, yeah. Right. It, that is not in right. this at all. But they, they show the bike in this movie more than this part two. I really I could watch part one a thousand times. I could probably watch part two like a hundred times. Yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, it's I've I've heard that the ABC one or whatever the TV one was much more faithful, I guess, to the actual book. But the one thing I just want to bring up, I know maybe it's a little controversial, but here we go. Here we go. <laughs> what do you got? No, like I'm sure you guys know about this, that orgy scene or whatever that happens in the book. Do you not know about this cat? No, because I haven't read the book. <laughs> I haven't either. I, I don't know what this is. Wait, neither. whoa, whoa. Oh my god, you guys know about this. Okay, this okay, here we go. For this? So <laughs> apparently in the book. The way that it ends is they defeat it, and then the, they, they start to leave the cave, and they all get lost. And then, for some reason, they all have an orgy. And this is real. That, are you are you kidding? They all have sex. <laughs> I, why would I make this up? I don't know. <laughs> they, I swear to God, read about, up on it. They, have, they all have sex with Beverly, and then, then the movie ends the same way. I know. Yep. And that's how it ends. What? Yep. And then they all, wait. same way it ends, like they do the blood pack, and yeah. That's wild. Oh, okay, yeah. I was like, wait, as adults or as kids? As kids? No, no, no. This is as kids. This is literally, I'm, I know. <laughs> so the way oh that it ends. Oh, my God. Yeah. So they kill it as kids, and they're trying to leave the sewers, and they get lost. And then they're like, maybe we should all just have sex. And then. Oh, what yeah. the <laughs> yeah. So that's never been put on the film, obviously, because they're like, what the fuck, Stephen King? He's like, hey, hey, hey. Like sort of thing. It was a different time. It was a different time. Like, yeah, hmm. our dudes were a okay with minors. Well, I guess I guess Eddie's mom was right that she was a little dirty girl then. If that was that happened, oh, uh, no. poor Beverly. <laughs> but you didn't know that either, Eric. Just God did not know that. No. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was obviously uh, omitted from the film. I did know, however, that the bully. You know, the not not the main bully, but the second bully who's like a tall, like with the black hair who goes in the sewer. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's um a clone yeah. of Keanu Reeves and Adam Driver mixed together. I read that somewhere. Oh, like genetic engineering. What? Yeah, yeah, that's that's like a fact. verified. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> but like, if you look at that, it's like there's no like better Keanu Adam Driver kid mixed together. I don't know. Well, his name is Keanu Driver. I don't know if you saw in the credits. What? Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> this adds up. We're we're breaking down barriers today. Oh my god, I'm very gullible. I'm believing this. Is it true? <laughs> No, 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 no. The, the orgy thing. I'm like, what? No, no, the orgy thing. I swear to God, is true. Please look that up. That's 100 percent true. But that, no, that, that's a little radical. Yeah. That's a that's, lot. That's, that's a lot. That didn't age well. No, no. I, I like this ending much better. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Was there a moment though that scared you guys the most of this entire film? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've watched this movie so much that I'm just like unfazed. Just like when I watch The Conjuring, I could just watch that and go to sleep. But I'm just like unfazed <laughs> by all the horror scenes now. I'm trying to think what made me jump the first time. Because I'm a jumper. I will jump if something pops out at me. I think the scariest scene is like the creepy painting lady with Stanley or whatever. Like the first time she shows up, and I'm just like, I, I think I was like, what the, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> what? It's just so, like, she's just so creepy. Where she's making out with him in the cave. Oh, that? I was yeah. like, ooh. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'd say the Georgie, like, you'll float too. You'll, and his face is melting. That, like, gave me goosebumps in the theater, I remember. Oh, when they're in the basement and it's flooded? Yeah, it's all flooded. And you see, like, him, like, slowly rising from the water. And, like, Georgie's face is melting. Oh, yeah. Dude, he's, like, he's like a puppet, too, at the end. He just slammed well, he into is. the water. I know. But it was just, ew, That was, yeah, you're right. That was. That was scary. The opening shot of his arm getting ripped off. Uh, anytime like it like yeah. runs at you, like all like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like it's it's pretty like pretty scary. That's what Bill Skarsgård brings to it. He brings like an animalistic way to it. I also heard him talk on Jimmy Kimmel about how like the first shot he did was with Eddie in the house, I think, mm. or something along where he's like like drooling mm. and like scaring like a little kid, and he's doing the scene, and the director's yeah. not calling cut, and he's going, he's like, I am in the back of his head. He's like, I am absolutely traumatizing this kid and at the end of the scene it, the director calls cut and the kid who plays eddie was like great i love what you're doing with the character fantastic and he's like what the f-? like these kids are crazy <laughs> professional kids Actors. and yeah a lot of it was all a lot of their riffraff talking all that stuff was all improv they were just like your mom well your mom said this like that's all like, real <laughs> not in the script like then just having fun i like that part of it that's my the kids mm-hmm. being kids and fighting it is the best part of the, it so. yeah i just i went oh my god while you were talking because i remembered the freaking garage scene that was the yep. scariest part oh, where they're shit. just like yeah. i totally yeah, forgot about that 
that was terrifying. In a theater too, when the, yeah, slide, the slides like, are going and it, that, was mine. that was mine. That was yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Alec. Are you, are you mad that Kat spoiled your your telling? No, 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 no. Um, but the only the only complaint I have about that because I think that that part is scary because there's nowhere to go. But um, why does it cut to black so many times? I'm like, no, like just because they're acting like, oh, mate, the lights going out. It's like, no, don't don't give me that shit. It doesn't go pink. It's going in. You ever use one of those slides? It's going in mm-hmm. between the slides. Yeah, I want to see more. I want to see more. But uh, no, I, I I love that part too because it's like you know, oh God, I feel bad calling him the little chubby kid i just don't know his name it just escapes me but i just love how he's he like essentially rescues them he loves the garage door and beverly's like think mm. and then she comes to hug bill and i'm like I, know. Friend, so. yeah. I think that actor's name is jeremy trailer or taylor he's also i, I mentioned i mentioned are you afraid of the dark at the start of this he was he's a, one of the new midnight society characters in the new are you afraid of, are you afraid of the dark yeah yeah he's good he's good uh, so so you just mentioned like they all all these kids grow up the cast in the second one I think only the guy who plays Richie and Beverly the kids asked were asked like who they want to play their role yeah like the, Richie asked for Bill Hader for uh, Chastain and got those two and the kid who played Mike wanted Chadwick Boseman oh uh, didn't get Chadwick the guy who played Ben. Ben wanted Chris Pratt, which would have been good too. Oh, I feel yeah. like I could have seen that. I could see that. The guy who wanted Bill. The guy who played Bill said, "Who do you want to play you?" He said, "Christian Bale." It's like, all right, dude, tall order, but okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, I just, I just had to go off on that. But, you wouldn't uh, have done this, I don't think. No, no, unless it chapter one like broke, which it did. It did. It, it was huge, it did. huge opening weekend for a hor- the biggest horror film I think. Like, right, Alex? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, financially with inflation, it, it is crazy i love this movie i get very excited i mean i think they had a pretty good cast for the second one i mean huge, huge, they got james mcavoy i mean he's huge. an a-lister it's not like he's a b or c lister i had to look it up because it's gonna bug me the chubby kid's name is ben ben yeah ben, <laughs> ben wanted chris yeah chris pratt yes yeah, ben and and ben i love that new kids on the block thing is it. so funny <laughs> and like she makes all those little references like are you sure you got the right stuff and then like looks at him, he's just like, oh. Wow. My favorite line though, the whole movie is when Ben is explaining to everybody, and he's just like, Jerry used to be a beaver trapping town. He's like, still is, boys, am I right? And like puts his hands up. <laughs> my, and no one. My <laughs> favorite line is um the paint. Back to your painting thing. When he's like, I see, keep seeing this woman, and she keeps scaring me. And then Richie goes, Is she hot? And then he goes, No, Richie, <laughs> she's not hot. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I have two favorite yeah. lines. One is Richie, where he's like, "Do only virgins see this? Because I'm not seeing this freaking cloud." Yeah. <laughs> My second one is oh, beep beep Richie. Beep beep. beep. And I think Pennywise says that. Yes, because I literally, me and my friends would say that all the time. We'd be like, "Beep beep Richie." <laughs> Well, that I love the idea of that because that's their inside joke between the Losers Club. They say when Richie talks too much, they go beep beep Richie, but it knows it, so it would go beep beep Richie. So it's like, oh, he knows our inside jokes. He's deep within us. So love that. Love everything about it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a freaking great movie, and uh, everybody just just watch it. Just watch it. If you haven't seen it, just watch it. Oh, and last thing, I know we got to wrap it up, but the thing I didn't realize is the pharmacy girl. Remember her, where it's like loser on his cast? Yeah, yeah. She's the bully in the bathroom that throws the yeah. trash on Beverly. Yeah. I didn't realize that until this time I watched it. Unless I forgot it, I don't know. Oh yeah, she's the worst. She's so she's mean. horrible. She's so mean. <laughs> yeah. Cat, any uh, any last words on it? It's an amazing movie. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. As you can see, it's like a grand time. No, it's a great one. My favorite Pennywise line is it's like, sorry, Billy, think this isn't real enough for you. Like that. I love that line. Yeah. Dude, you, oh. you sound just like him. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep, Richie. That's more like the Tim Curry version. one. Yeah. It's more like c- cigarettes and like. <laughs> yeah. It's like Krusty the Clown sort of thing, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, well, Kat, uh, I wanted to, before we go, uh, I want to hear about your stickers. Yes. So, yeah, I started this little small business where I sell spooky stickers and, like, kind of, like, horror and Tim Burton-esque because I'm, like, a huge fan of, like, The Nightmare Before Christmas and The Phillips Bride and all that fun jazz. But, yeah, so I started this during the pandemic because I was, like, my artistic soul is dying a little bit. 
um, uh, just being quarantined and stuff. So I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to try this. And I started like creating and I have like a couple of different original designs. I sell my stickers through Instagram. My page is called Spooky Meows with a, a Z and an X at the end. But yeah, I have like a couple of original designs. Um, I actually wanted to make a Pennywise sticker for this podcast specifically, but mm. I still have a broken tablet. So, <laughs> oh no. Well, that sounds awesome, though. Um, I've seen. I mean, I, I follow you on Instagram, so I have. I have seen them. But yeah, they're they're really cool. So we'll definitely post it in our on on the Instagram for us too, and share it. Thanks. And once you fix that tablet, you better do a Pennywise one. Oh yeah, it's that definitely for yeah, be <laughs> like, oh here we go. I definitely have an idea already of what I'm gonna design design wise to make, but yeah, I, I need to get a tablet because I'm like I need I have so many ideas and I need to create them into stickers. <laughs> well, hopefully soon then. Yeah. Cool. Well, Kat, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Good. Well, Eric, you know what time it is. It was. It's time to spin the wheel, cat. Beep, beep, Richie. <laughs> we're gonna spin too. You'll spin too. You'll spin too. All right, we're spinning. What we got, Alec? Oh, I have not seen this one. The lighthouse. Ooh. Ooh. Have you seen that it's, one, cat? No, it's it's on my bucket list. It's the one with um, what's his name? Robert Pattinson, right? Yes, yeah, William Defoe and him. Yep, and that's it. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun. We have Justin Wellickson as a guest for that one, so he's coming back. He's coming back quick. He just got off the action wheel with us, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, Cat, and we will see everybody next week with the lighthouse. Woo! Woo! Beep beep.